Hey, welcome to the next lecture um, about physical application. So in this in this section, right, there are basically three types of problems we're going to look at. So we're going to look at spring problems where we have a spring stretched or compressed by a force. You've already read all of this. We're going to look at the lifting problems and we're going to look at the pumping problems. Now I know there's also one about mass. You can kind of look at that. The mass will kind of come into play when we're talking about lifting and pumping. It's going to already kind of be in there. Um, so not that it's not important. It's in, it is quite important to understand that um, the mass of a <clears throat> one-dimensional object can just be the integral of the density. And remember, density is unit of mass per length. But let's, I'm going to do three problems for you. A spring, a lifting, and a pumping. These might take a little longer than normal, but we're going to get those done. And then um, th this can be difficult. Like, of course, right? There's a reason word problems or mathematician like to call them application problems. There's a reason why those get kind of a bad name. Not that they're bad, but they just take a little bit more effort and um, they take kind of training your brain to think a certain way. But again, just like anything in math, and I've already said this before, you just have to do it right to get good at it. So our first example, we have a spring that has a natural length of one meter. It can be stretched to a length of 1.8 meters with a 24 Newton force. Okay, so my first question, how much work will it take to stretch the spring from its natural <clears throat> length to three meters? So um, let's kind of figure out what we need, right? Like that's part of, and if you look at any kind of the problem solving process, anytime you kind of read about how to solve a problem, you first want to kind of figure out what you know, what you don't know, and then go from there. Um, so the first thing we need to figure out is, do we have all the information that's needed? Well, I know that if I want to, so we're going to start off with A here, we want to look for work, right? We want to, it's a big joke, but we want to know the work. And what what is work? The definition of work, right, is just, in our case, the integral of uh, function, the force function, right? Work is force times distance. And now if we're talking about like a continuous um, idea that uh, that's not constant force, right? But something that changes, then I can talk about actual the work over that entire um, displacement or distance by integrating from A to B of my force function. So what we also need in this case, though, is Hooke's law. So Hooke's law, right, gives us a way for us to find and you are, I know you already read this, but it gives us a way for us to find the force equation for a spring where K is that constant, right? It's that spring constant, depending on whatever your spring is made of, how tight your spring is, how large your spring coil is, um, the material of it, all that good stuff. So I know I want to integrate this right here. And remember, X is the distance from the natural length. This is the displacement or the distance from um from its natural state. So what do I need? If I look in this first one, what do I know? The only thing I know is I know that its natural state is one, and I wanna know um, <clears throat> um, how much work it'll take to stretch it to three. So basically two meters beyond its natural state, okay? So two meters beyond our two meters displacement, right? How much work will it take? Well, I have to figure out this K. So there's a reason I need to figure out what K is. I need to know that spring constant. And so there's a reason that they tell you this information right here that a 24 Newton force, right, will stretch a spring to a length of 1.8 meters. So force again equals your spring constant times your displacement. So I am going to just plug that in. I know that 24 is the force it would take, right, to stretch the spring 0 0.8 meters away from its natural length. So how did I get 0 0.1? I just put 1.8 minus 1 because its natural length is 1. I divide by that 0.8, right? This is newtons. This is meters. I've heard that units are important. <laughs> I am a mathematician, so not an applied mathematician. So sometimes, oh, whoops, sorry, there's some of my lecture from my last lecture. Um, <clears throat> sometimes I'm a little lax with units, but units are really important. I definitely need units in your final answer. I'm going to just tell you that right now. You should probably carry them throughout, but I definitely need them in your final answer. All right, so now we have, uh, we have a function, right, that gives us the force needed, basically, to stretch the spring um, X meters beyond its natural 
um, length. So I can find this the work in this case. So um, for part A, I want to go to three meters. Right, so how many meters beyond its natural length do I want to go? I want to go two, and I'm stretching it. I'm not compressing it, so it's a positive two. If I was asking, like, um, uh, what kind of force would need to compress it, right, to maybe 0.5 meters, then I'm going to be going from zero to, like, a negative 0.5k because direction, the direction of it matters. But in this case, I'm going from zero to two. I'm going to integrate 30x, so this actually is pretty easy. I think you guys, again, which is kind of true in all of this, um, you'll see that the actual calculus, the actual integration is not that difficult. It's really just uh, setting it up that's the hardest. 60, and then what are our <clears throat> units on this? Well, this is um, joules, I believe, right? Joules, okay? So that's Newton meters, I think. Newton meters, probably, right? Newton meters? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure it's been meters, okay? Good, so that was part A and that was pretty easy. I think these spring ones aren't that bad. Um, if we look at part B, so part B I kind of threw in this just to kind of get you to think a little bit about what this question is asking. How far will a force of 40 newtons stretch the spring? Guys, this isn't a calculus question. This is just a Hooke's Law question. So how far, so I'm asking for distance, right? So I'm asking for the X value. Will a force of 45 newtons stretch the spring? So what do I know? I know that my force is equal to 30 times my the distance from the equilibrium. Um, it's not asking for work, so I'm not integrating anything. So be careful sometimes, right? I'm not just going to start integrating just because... Um, it's calculus, <laughs> but what do I know? I know the force. They want to know 45 newtons, right? If you look at newtons, is going to stretch. Remember, this is newtons per meter, right? It's going to stretch the spring how far? So if I divide, that would be 45 over 30, and then I would have newtons over newtons over meters, and I usually don't I always show my units every single time, but I kind of want to do this just to show you. We get newtons times meters over newtons if I flip it. And look at my newtons do cancel, and I just get 45 divided by 30, or 1.5 meters. So remember that 1.5, that doesn't mean it stretches it to 1.5. It means it'll stretch it at 1.5 meters beyond its natural length. So it'll be stretched, a 45 uh, newton force will stretch it to 2.5 meters total, right? So the spring ones, Think are pretty easy. They're pretty straightforward. Um, most of the time, they're gonna they're gonna give you enough of a, um, enough information to find that spring constant, and then you can use that spring constant with Hooke's law to find your work. All right, let's look at a lifting problem. Okay, so here's our lifting example. It's gonna be similar to the one in your book, but um, I wanted to do one kind of similar just so I can talk it through, and then maybe you can read. Well, you've already read the one in your book, so. Um, we have this lifting problem, and, and it's going to be very similar to the pumping problem. So I don't really want you to think of like the lifting problem and the pumping problem is totally different. It's kind of the same idea, but we have a five kilogram bucket is lifted from the ground <clears throat> into the R. <laughs> into the air by pulling in, and I'm sorry that my handwriting is getting a little sloppy, um, 20 meters of rope at a constant speed. The rope weighs 0 0.08 kilograms per meter. How much work is done to lift the rope and the bucket? So we have a couple things going on here, and we're going to break this up into two, into two things. So um, what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to kind of think about um, I'm gonna draw a quick picture, right? So I'm up here super happy that I get to not only lift a bucket, right? And maybe it's on like a pulley system or something, right? Um, but I get to do the math to uh, do the buckets. So, and where the bucket's attached here, I'm going to kind of define some stuff here. I'm gonna define this to be um, zero, right? We'll define it over here. This is going to be zero. And then how far am I lifting this up? I'm lifting it up 20 meters. So this is going to be 20 meters right here. So the bucket is going from zero to 20 meters, and that is actually going to be a, um, just a constant work, right? So nothing is really changing as I lift up the, the actual weight of the bucket. But what is changing is that rope, because as I'm pulling that rope up and up, I'm pulling less and less rope, right? As I, um, 
and pulling it and pulling it at a constant speed, but I'm having to do less and less work as the bucket gets higher to the top because I don't have as much rope. I mean, you've seen that done or you've probably done it yourself when you're a kid or something, um, or some of you work construction, and so I know you've probably done that before. So we really have to consider two things here. So let's look at the, I'm first going to look at the bucket because that's the easiest thing to look at. Okay, so the work for the bucket, W sub B. Remember, um, work is just force times distance, right? So we need to figure out um, what the force is of the bucket. So remember the force of the bucket, the force is due to acceleration of gravity. So we know that force is mass times acceleration. So if I take five kilograms times, and we're in, um, uh, we are in the metric system. <laughs> oh my goodness, I forgot that for a minute. So remember, um, this is force times, uh, mass times acceleration is force. And what's the acceleration? It's acceleration due to gravity. So that's five kilograms times 9.8 <clears throat> uh, meters per second squared. And then I have to multiply by, let me move this over a little bit. So I maybe can get this done, times the distance. So remember, work is force times distance. So what is the distance that we're going to travel? We're going to travel 20 meters, right? So what is the work done by the bucket, right? I have, um, it looks like 980 joules. So remember, I'm no, I'm no physicist, but um, a joule, I believe, is a newton meter, and I believe a newton is um, a kilogram meter per second squared. So I think my units all match up. I would have meters squared times kilograms all over seconds squared. So that's the work of the work just to require to bring up the bucket because the bucket, its weight doesn't change. Um, nothing changes as we bring this up. But what about the rope? right? So we need to kind of talk about what's happening um, with the rope. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, like we do a lot in this class, right, is I'm just going to think about what if I took a tiny little like section, right, of this rope, and let's say that this section is up at a height of y. So I'm going to take a random section, and I know that this, the height of this is at height y, okay? And remember, again, I want to find um, some way to talk about the work that's done here. Now, I know that for your lifting problems that they give you like a whole um, whole formula for the lifting problems, but I, I also kind of want you to just think about this a little bit, right? So I want to talk about, let's figure out what my force is going to be for the rope, and let's just think about adding up, you know, what would the work be to take this tiny little piece right, which I'm going to say that the height of this piece is dy, and then I'm going to see what is the work done just to take this tiny piece of the rope from where it's at at y up to the top. Well, what is the distance that it's going to? So the work for the rope, right, I'm, I, I want to think about the distance, right, that this guy is going to go. So the distance that this guy is going to go is 20 minus y. Notice it's already up at y, right? So what is the distance that it's going to travel? It's going to be 20 minus y. And remember, work is force times distance. And in your book, they kind of talk about that force. That force is the density times the acceleration due to gravity, okay? Or just the weight of it, right? That mass of it. Um, I know mass and weight are different, but anyway, so what is the density of this rope? The density of this rope, if we kind of do a little bit here, is 0 0.08 kilograms per meter, and then acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared, right? So you, you can kind of see that this is all going to work out if we did think about this in terms of our units. So I'm going to have, what is my force? My force is going to be that 0 0.08, right? I'm not going to put n units in this, times 9.8 right here. There's my force. And then what is the distance that that tiny little piece of rope would travel? Well, it's already at y, so it really just has to travel the rest of that distance. That's that d. Okay, so that's going to be kind of my force um, equation. I know this is a little bit different than like the Hooke's Law one, but basically with these lifting problems, we're just looking at um, taking basically little slices of work and then adding them all up again with that integral sign, adding all those up um, over 
over where I can take those slices. So where could I take these slices from? Well, I could start off at zero. I could take the slice that is right there, right by the bucket, and then all the way up to the top. So where am I gonna integrate from? I'm gonna integrate from zero to 20 because that's where I can take those tiny little bit of ropes. And basically, again, the idea with integrals is just adding up an infinite number of times. So I'm basically adding up an infinite number of these slices of rope and figuring out what is the work it takes to add up just to take one of those slices and then adding them all up. I, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so um, so this is my equation. I have y's just because I let y be my vertical distance. Um, if you, I just am going to go ahead and multiply this all out just because we get 15.68 minus 0 0.784 about <clears throat> y dy. Now again, look at the end. The actual calculus of this is quite easy. 0 0.392 um, y squared, and we're going to go from 0 to 20. So I just want to point out again, this guy right here is the length that a small chunk of the rope would have to travel. This right here is where could I take those chunks, right? I can take chunks of rope between 0 and 20. This right here tells me what each chunk of rope, the distance it has to go. And think about that, that makes sense. Like if I took that chunk of rope right by the bucket, if I did 20 minus zero, it would have to travel 20 meters, right? Or if I took the chunk of rope that's, or a piece of rope that's five meters from the bottom, then it would have to travel 15. Okay, just really wanna point that out because sometimes these can be difficult to set up. And if you plug that all in and everything, we get, I think about 156.8 joules. Okay. And so what's my total work? We're almost done. What's my total work? It's the work from the bucket plus the work from the rope, right? So I would take 980 joules plus 156.8 joules, right? And we get ah, uh, 1,136.8 joules of work to raise the rope and the bucket. Good. All right, you guys, one more example, a pumping problem, and then we'll call it good. All right, guys, so we know a couple, here's our next example of a pumping problem. Um, we have an inverted conical tank. So I have a tank that looks um, something like this, and I need to label some stuff for you because you don't actually have enough information yet to um, solve this. Um, but it's filled to within two feet of the top with water. So you, you've read through um, the these pumping problems and this idea of, you know, our density of water is a thousand kilograms per meter cubed. And um, we'll multiply by that again by the 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, you can do these problems also um, not in the metric system. Like if you do it um, in the English systems with like pounds, then that's already kind of in there for you. So you don't have to worry about that 9.8. Right now we're just going to do this with the 9.8. So um, we have an inverted conical tank. It's filled to so we have water and okay so here's some stuff about the tank <laughs> i need to tell you that so the tank is um let's see 10 meters high okay and five meters um across uh five meter uh width or excuse me radius at the top okay so i know a couple things about this tank i know that that's five i know um that that is 10 the entire thing and I am going to look at just taking water and that water is only filled up to within two two meters of the top and I want to know how what's the work to pump out that amount of water so as you saw like in your book what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick this on an xy axis right so that I can figure this out because if we think about this let's think about if we took just Let's say at some y value, I'm going to take just a slice of water and I want to figure out what would be the work required to just take that slice of water and move it up to the top of the tank. That's why this is going to change, right? Because the amount of water I have in this slice is different than the amount of water that I have in this slice right here. So this example is a bit different than your book, but it's an important example to understand. So what I want, again, is I want to figure out um, the force required to move this little slice, or excuse me, the work required to move this little slice of water. And then I'm going to add up all of those slices and, and add it all up to figure out how much would it actually take to move it all. So let's just look at the work of one of these 
little slices. That's what I like to call it. Okay. So what I need to figure out is I need to figure out force times my distance, right? So my force I need to, and, and let me try and be a little bit better about your, <laughs> what your book has. So this force right here, that's going to be the area, right, of my slice. So we'll just call that a sub y because that area is going to change. Um, if I take that area and I multiply it times the density and times gravity, right, that's going to be kind of my mass. So this is basically going to be the force of my slice. And then I have to figure out what my, the distance of this slice is. That's going to be my total work. Okay. But the work for this slice then. So I know that my density of water is 1000 kilograms per meter cubed, right? Times gravity is going to be that 9.8 meters per second squared. And then times, so let's think about the area of <clears throat> this guy right here. This one's going to be a little bit trickier than what we had in your um, in your book. So the height of this slice is going to be y, right? And I need to figure out the area of basically this um, this circle. So this circle, its area is going to be pi r squared. So what is that r going to be? So that r is the distance on this line right here, and that that distance is on whatever this line is. So remember what I told you that this guy is 10 meters high. So I know that this whole distance here is 10 and I know that this is five. So I know that this point right here is 510. So I actually can find a function for this line right here and it'd be pretty easy to find. So remember y equals mx plus b. You guys remember that of course. Well b is going to be my um, y-intercept, in this case it's zero, it's going through the origin. And then m, so what is my slope? Well, you have to go up 10 and to the right five. So it's gonna be 10 over five x, or you could do similar triangles also, but it looks like that equation right there is y equals two x. Now remember, I want y to be my independent variable, so that says then that x is one half of y. So that radius right there, what is the radius, that horizontal distance? It's just going to be half of whatever the height is of my, um, um, I'm going to run out of room here. <laughs> um, it's just, let's just say that this is the force of my slice. So I don't have to worry about the distance, the force of my slice. So it's going to be one half times y. And what would that be? That would be a meter, right? So we should have everything working out um, in terms of our, our meters and everything. Does that make sense? The one half y? You can't answer. You're watching this on a video, right? So that's, that's the area of my slice. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's not. <laughs> I was wondering, I knew my meters should, yeah, I was wondering why that wasn't quite working and you were probably wondering yourself. Um, and I was just pretending that it was working. This is 9.8 meters per second squared. I'm sorry, the area then of that circle, right? is pi times my radius squared. So if my radius is one half y, that would be pi times one fourth y squared. And then I'd have meters squared. That's gonna be much, 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 much better. Now we're gonna get new meters. That's much better, okay? So um, I'm gonna be able to pull a lot of this stuff out. So uh, let's see here. Um, if I simplify this a little bit, I believe, I can, I can simplify this a bit. I really am doing 1,000 divided by 4. <laughs> because I can't do it at times 9.8. Um, so we get 24,500, um, 2,450. Oh my goodness, I think I need, I think I need a break. Uh, pi, and then I have the y squared. That's going to be my force. And then what is the distance, right, that this slice is going to have to go. So the distance that this slice is going to have to go, if I take this slice at a high y, right, what is the distance? We're saying it's going to pump to the top of the tank. So I know that two meters, it's going to come, oh, I put feet, that two meters is going to come into play pretty soon, but I'm going to pump it to the top of the tank. So just like we saw in the lifting problem, what is this distance right here? If it's already up at y, this is going to be 10 minus y because I've already, I'm already up at y, so I don't have to include that. So I have 10 minus y. I'm sorry, that should not be feet, that should be meters. Okay, so now we're almost there. 
let's figure out our work now. So I'm going to take the work um, of all of these slices. Okay, so I have all of these. This is the work of this of uh, that would be required to pump, right? And that dy is kind of the um, height of that slice. This would be the work required to pump one slice at some height of y. Now the question is, where can I take the slices? That's what the actual limits of integration are going to give us. So where can I take those slices, right? Well, I can take slices um, from zero all the way up to right here. I am stuck with water. My water only goes up to this part right here, which is it within two meters of the top. So where can slices come from between zero and eight meters? I hope that makes sense. That's what that zero to eight is. So remember the limits of integration tell me where can I take the slices. This right here tells me how far do the slices travel. Okay, so now we can just kind of get ready to go. That was the hard part. Now we get rewarded by doing some pretty simple integration. It's but the hardest part, man, is totally setting these up. I don't know if I've mentioned this. I bet I've only mentioned it 10 times, but in order to get good at math, you got to do it. So I encourage you to really try these. Do the fun sheet. Um, look up the solutions to, you know, the suggested homework problems, all of that um, good stuff. So let's see what we got here. So I went ahead and plugged in the A, plug in the zero. If you kind of multiply that out, we get about um, one. <laughs> We get this three three. I'm just gonna round pi joules. So quite a bit of um, work, right? Which that's okay. That's gonna make sense. We are we have ten meters. That that's that's a lot, right? That's um quite a large tank, uh, and that's quite a lot of water. Water's pretty heavy. That's quite a lot of water that we're gonna be pumping out. So I hope that makes sense. Again, you're going to be, this is the work required to pump a slice, right? You have the density times gravity if we're in um, the metric system times the area of one of those slices times how far that slice goes dy. And that's going to be true for the lifting problems also. You're just going to kind of think of it as a little chunk of the rope. All right, guys, that was a long one, but that's a tough section. Let me know if you have any questions.